O my hearers, will any of you have such a repentance? If you do, it will be a beacon to all persons who sin in the future. If you have such a repentance as that, it will be a warning to generations yet to come. In the life of Benjamin Keach, and he always was once of my pre once of my predecessors, I find the ease of a man who had been a professor of religion, but had departed from the profession and had gone into awful sin. When he came to die, Keach, with many other friends, went to see him, but they could never stay with him above five minutes at a time, for he said, quote, Get ye gone, it is of no use your coming to me. I have sent away the Holy Ghost, I am like Esau, I have sold my birthright, and though I seek it carefully with tears, I can never find it again. End quote. And then he would repeat dreadful words like these, quote, My mouth is filled with gravel stones, and I drink wormwood day and night. Tell me not, tell me not of Christ. I know he is a Savior, but I hate him and he hates me. I know I must die, I know I must perish. End quote and then follow doleful cries and hideous noises such as none could bear. They returned again, in his placid moments, only to stir him up once more and make him cry out in his despair, I am lost, I am lost, it is of no use your telling me anything about it. Ah, there may be a man here who may have such a death as that. Let me warn him ere he come to it. And may God the Holy Spirit grant that that man may be turned on to God and made a true penitent. And then he need not have any more fear. For he who has had his sins washed away in the Savior's blood need not have any remorse for his sins, for they are pardoned through the Redeemer. The Repentance of the Saint Job, I have sinned. And now I come into daylight. I have been taking you through dark and dreary confessions. I shall detain you there no longer, but bring you out of the two good confessions which I have to read to you. The first is that of Job in the seventh chapter and the twentieth verse. Quote, I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee, O thou preserver of men? End quote. This is the repentance of the saint. Job was a saint, but he sinned. This is the repentance of the man who is a child of God already, an acceptable repentance before God. But as I intend to dwell upon this in the evening, I shall now leave it for fear of wearying you. David was a specimen of this kind of repentance, and I would have you carefully study his penitential psalms, the language of which is ever full of weeping humility and earnest penitence. The Blessed Confet Confession the prodigal, I have sued, I have sinned. Luke chapter 15, verse 18. 7. I now come to the last instance, which I shall mention. It is the case of the prodigal. In Luke chapter 15, verse 18, we find the prodigal says, quote, Father, I have sinned, end quote. Oh, here is a blessed confession. Here is that which proves a man to be a regenerate character. Father, I have sinned. Let me picture the scene. There is the prodigal. He has run away from a good home and a kind father, and he has spent all his money with harlots, and now he has none left. He goes to his old companions and asks them for relief. They laugh him to scorn. Oh, says he, you have drunk my wine many a day. I've always stood paymaster to you in all your revelries. Will you not help me? Get you gone, they say. And he is turned out of doors. He goes to all his friends with whom he had associated. But no man gives him anything. At last a certain citizen of the country said, quote, You want something to do, do you? Well, go and feed my swine. End quote. The poor prodigal, the son of a rich landowner, who had a great fortune of his own, has to go out and to feed swine. And he a Jew, too. The worst employment, to his mind, to which he could be put. See him there, in squalid rags, feeding swine? And what are his wages? Why, so little that he, quote, would fain have filled his belly 
with the husks the wine the swine eat, but no man gave to him. End quote. Look, there he is with the fellow commoners of the sty, in all his mere and filthiness. Suddenly a thought put there by the good spirit strikes his mind. Quote, How is it, says he, that in my father's house there is bread enough to, and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. End quote. Off he goes. He begs his way from town to town. Sometimes he gets a lift on a coach, perhaps, but at other times he goes trudging his way up barren hills and down desolate vales, all alone. And now at last he comes to the hill outside the village and sees his father's house down below. There it is, the old popular poplar tree against it, and there are the stacks around it which he and his brothers used to run and play, and at the sight of the old homestead, all the feelings and associations of his former life rush upon him, and tears run down his cheeks, and he is almost ready to run away again. He says, quote, I wonder whether father's dead. I dare say mother broke her heart when I went away, and I was always her favorite. And if they are either of them alive, will they never see me again? They will shut the door in my face. What am I to do? I cannot go back. I am afraid to go forward. End quote. And while he was thus deliberating, his father had been walking on the housetop, looking out for his son. And though he could not see his father, his father could see him. Well, the father comes downstairs with all his might, runs up to him, and whilst he is thinking of running away, his father's arms are around his neck, and he falls to kissing him like a father, a loving father indeed. And then the son begins, quote, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called your son. End quote. And he was going to say, quote, Make me one as thy hired servants. End quote. But his father puts his hand on his mouth. Quote, no more of that, says he. I forgive you all. You shall not say anything about being a hired servant. I will have none of that. Come along, says in. Come along, poor prodigal. Ho! Oh, says he to the servants. Bring hither the best robe and put it on him, and put shoes in his poor bleeding feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this is my son. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. End quote. Oh, what a precious reception for one of the chief of sinners. Good Matthew Henry's says, quote, His father saw him, there were eyes of mercy. He ran to meet him, there were legs of mercy. He put his arms around his neck, there were arms of mercy. He kissed him, there were kisses of mercy. He said to him, there were words of mercy. Bring hither the best robe, there were deeds of mercy. Wonders of mercy, all mercy. Oh, what a God of mercy he is, end quote. Now, prodigal, you do the same. Has God put it into your heart? There are many who have been running away for a long time now. Does God say, return? Oh, I bid you return then, for as surely as, thou, as ever thou dost return, he will take thee in. There never was a poor sinner yet who came to Christ whom Christ turned away. If he turns you away, it will be the first. Oh, if you could but try him. Quote, ah, sir, I'm so black, so filthy, so vile. End quote. Well, come along with you. You cannot be blacker than the prodigal. Come to your father's house, and as surely as he is God, he will keep his word. Quote, him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. End quote. Oh, if I might hear that some had come to Christ this morning, I would indeed bless God. I must tell here, for the honor of God and Christ, one remarkable circumstance, and then I have done. You will remember that one morning I mentioned the case of an infidel, who had been a scorner and scoffer, but who through reading one of my printed sermons had been brought to God's house, and then to God's feet. Well, last Christmas Day, 
the same infidel gathered together all his books, and went into the market-place at Norwich, and there made a public recantation of all his errors, and a profession of Christ, and then taking up all his books which he had written, and had in his house on evil subjects, burned them in the sight of the people. I have blessed God for such a wonder of grace as that, and pray that there may be many more such, who, though they be born prodigal, will yet return home, saying, I have sinned. Stillwater's Revival Books is now located at PuritanDownloads.com. It's your worldwide online Reformation home for the very best in free and discounted classic and contemporary Puritan and Reformed books, MP3s, and videos. For much more information on the Puritans and Reformers, including the best free and discounted classic and contemporary books, MP3s, digital downloads, and videos, please visit Stillwater's Revival Books at PuritanDownloads.com. Stillwater's Revival Books also publishes the Puritan Hard Drive, the most powerful and practical Christian study tool ever produced. All thanks and glory be to the mercy, grace, and love of the Lord Jesus Christ for this remarkable and wonderful new Christian study tool. The Puritan Hard Drive contains over 12,500 of the best Reformation books, MP3s, and videos ever gathered onto one portable Christian study tool. An extraordinary collection of Puritan, Protestant, Calvinistic, Presbyterian, Covenanter, and Reformed Baptist resources. It's fully upgradable and it's small enough to fit in your pocket. The Puritan hard drive combines an embedded database containing many millions of records with the most amazing and extraordinary custom Christian search and research software ever created. The Puritan hard drive has been produced to assist you in the fascinating and exhilarating spiritual, intellectual, familial, ecclesiastical, and societal adventure that is living the Christian life. It has been specifically designed so that you might more faithfully know, serve, and love the Lord Jesus Christ, as well as to help you to do all you can to bring glory to His great name. If you want to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, then the Puritan hard drive is for you. Visit PuritanDownloads.com today for much more information on the Puritan hard drive and to take advantage of all the free and discounted Reformation and Puritan books MP3s and videos that we offer at Stillwater's Revival Books.